Hi, this is Code Cowboy here, and I'm going to demonstrate how to easily experiment with table partitioning in SQL Server. So, what you first need is you actually need the Enterprise Edition of SQL Server. Uh, all the other editions do not provide the table partitioning feature. So, here I have two mirror databases one that's partitioned already, and one that's not partitioned. So, I'm going to go to the not partitioned database, and what I did was I created a table that has 40 million rows and I am going to partition that and I'll recommend actually recommend uh, you know something around that range uh, if you have just a, a table that's a million rows and you're experimenting with it you won't be able to necessarily distinguish the performance difference and you can't necessarily do experiments with the performance difference so um, you know, just make sure you have a fairly large uh, database, uh, probably upwards of the 20 million rows, 40 million row range. Uh, so here I'm going to go to the table that I'm going to partition. So I'm going to demonstrate it through the GUI first. So if I highlight the table that I want to partition and I right click, there will be a storage feature uh, in the Enterprise Edition of SQL Server and you're going to click on create partition and it's going to bring up the partition wizard and the first thing it's going to do it's going to choose ask you to choose a row I mean a column and I'm going to choose the order date column and what I recommend uh, even in production is that you choose a date column that provides your data aging so uh, very typically most of the data that we work with actually ages in some fashion so data that's accessed in the last six months or a year is likely uh, more frequently accessed than data that is stale or old uh, two years old or one year old or five years old or even ten years old so I'm gonna create a partition function here partition by year and the scheme I'm gonna call the same thing partition by year and what the scheme is is um, what the function is is it defines the boundaries and usually we'll define the right boundary as something less than a certain number so I'm doing date boundaries here and I'm going to push the set boundaries condition and because I picked an order date it's going to prompt me for the date ranges and I'm going to go with the borders of the actual years and, and I'm going to give it an extra year so that it creates an extra partition for that and instead of monthly I'm going to say yearly but you can see the choices that it has and it actually produces the definitions for me. Now normally I'll create an extra file group um, but if but in this case I am just going to set everything to primary here so after I set everything to primary uh, what what this is going to do is it's just going to create a bunch of scripts and if, if you get an error just make sure you have that extra row here and set a file group for that because what this does is um, any of the rows that is uh, greater than this would actually go in here so I'm going to estimate the storage and you'll notice the table I have is 40 million rows so it estimates the storage uh, for each one of these partitions to be 3.4 million rows, 4.0, 4.4 million rows, 4.6 million rows for example and now I'm going to click next and um, I simply just want to create the script and I'm going to click finish and it's going to create the script for me. Then now the script that I created, you'll notice. Let me format it in a more pretty way. 
you'll notice this defines the boundaries. So this here is actually the partition function, and it's, this is the name that I gave it in the GUI. And this is the partition scheme. And you'll notice what this partition scheme is, is it's simply a mapping of this boundary to this file group. So that's what a partition scheme is. It's just a mapping from a boundary to a file group. And notice there's an extra file group here for the ones that are basically greater than this. Uh, so if I executed this, it would actually create the table partitions. And that might take a while because it, it would have to rearrange the data in 40 million rows. It's uh, copying back and forth. But that in itself does not necessarily create the boundaries or it, it might actually have the indexes still in one partition which cumulatively has 40 million rows so what you have to do is you have to create a clustered index here that is on that partition scheme and passing it the order date or the date type that you want partition and since the partition scheme is based on this partition function which is based on the date what you're passing in is a column for the date so if we look at what this results in if I ran this and I'll have these scripts in the description area now if I ran this let me show you the table that it results in So you'll notice that if, if I query for the partitions, it now has 17 partitions. Actually, in, in my uh, example here, I actually created uh, partitions from 2005 to 2020 uh, with the extra partition being greater than 2020. So you'll see that I have 17 partitions here. But you'll notice some of the indexes and these are indexes here, still has 40 million rows, whereas this particular index here is broken down into 3.4 million rows, 4.0 million rows. So what exactly happened here? So if I query for the indexes, you'll notice this particular index I created, I, I aligned it with the partition scheme. So it separated the rows by year whereas these indexes I did not align it with the partition scheme that that is when I executed the create index statement I did not say use the partition scheme and passing in a particular date or a column for the partition scheme to uh, be separated yearly so you'll notice for these, it retained the 40 million rows in the index itself. So likely you'd want to mix and match uh, depending on certain performance uh, analysis that you have on your own database. Um, but for the most part, that is really what I wanted to demonstrate is, you know, when you're experimenting with this and you really want to see the performance difference of the before and after in your QA environment uh, doing load testing and performance testing and volume testing, um, you know, this is a quick way to do it. And I would recommend uh, using some type of date partition scheme. Now, one thing I do want to warn and I, I, I do want to express is that when you're running queries, the the way uh, the way to for the queries to take advantage of the partition is if you actually pass it a partition key. So um, you you might want to implement certain policies with the report writers and with the UI creators and application creators to always pass it the partition key. And one way you might want to do it is to say.
a user is allowed to specify a span of 12 months, uh, but they could look back, uh, you know, 20 years. So, but only in 12 month increments, you know, whether that 12 months is from, uh, you know, November to uh, next November or, you know, uh, August to next August, you know. So in that way, what you're doing is if you partition everything yearly, what you're restricting the query to do is to only scan through or look through two partitions at a time uh, versus going through all the yearly partitions. So uh, the reason why that's effective is because most users, I would say 99%, is looking for uh, data within current within the year, you know, and not data two years old or five years old. Uh, but if they are going to look for data that is, uh, you know, two years old or five years old, they could still do that, but they'll have to, say, set a filter, you know, to that 12-month range that they want to look uh, past. So, uh, but that that is something that you would have to change in your application or reports. Uh, to have a policy to sort of enforce that and take advantage of the table partition. So um, if I run this, and what this does is uh, th this first database is an exact replica of the second database, but this first database here is the EventureWorks 2012 and it has 40 million rows, but though that table is not partitioned, and this one is the 2012B, which is the version that I did partition. And you'll notice if I turn on the uh, query plan, so that we could see the query plan, we could see the cost of each one of those. The query that is basically, uh, it is an exact copy, uh, except that one is partitioned and one is not partitioned. So if we look at the query plan, you'll notice the first one is 98% cost and the second one is 2% cost. Uh, so there is a huge performance gain in using this type of strategy. And notice that the change is really very minimal because it is just a storage scheme and what you're really doing is you are simply uh, sort of just, is it, it's almost as simple as defining you know, a cluster, or uh, I mean a uh, clustered index or an index on that partition scheme. So that's really all you're doing is sort of defining the way certain items are stored um, and which bucket to put it, put, put it in and which bucket is basically the most frequently used bucket of data versus data that is barely ever used. Um, so if I go back to the query here, you'll notice not just the cost being so such a discrepancy uh, and performance gain. If you look at the I.O., you'll notice that the first non-partitioned query takes 15 million reads, uh, whereas the partition query only takes 200,000 reads. Or, or about 200,000 reads. So uh, once again, it, I'm just demonstrating quickly the difference between the performance gain uh, if you use certain strategies. And, uh, you know, definitely experiment with this uh, with, you know, live large volume data in your QA environment uh, before and after the partition. And, uh, you know, I hope this encourages you to use table partitioning if you have performance issues uh, related to data volume. And uh, thank you for watching.